How's it going guys? Randall aka Shizukats here on the Tretzis Collectibles channel to bring you guys our latest deck profile. Today we're going to be looking at a door pants list for the Fruit of Grisaia, which closely mirrors the builds played back when Grisaia was first released in Japanese back in early 2020. Unfortunately, Grisaia does not have access to certain tools that we would like to recommend using against current prominent threats in the English metagame, such as level 2 killers to use against Alice SAO but it's still a pretty decent choice into other decks that play a much more normal strategy. As usual, we start our deck profiles by taking a look at our Climax combos, starting with our level 1 Sachi. She sits at 4k base power, going up by 500 for each of your other Grisaia characters, up to a max of 6k. Her Climax combo with Door functions similarly to Bell from Don Machi. When the Climax is placed, you can either search or salvage the Sachin cooking event to add to hand. The cooking event mills 2, adds up the levels of the two milled cards, and lets you salvage a character whose level is equal or lower than that sum. Use this to constantly get Sachi level 1s back for repeated turns of climax combo, or spec into any particular utility that you might need for the current game state. As you would with Hestia Knives in Danmachi, you want to make sure you know exactly where your Sachi and cooking events are at all times, so that you don't accidentally whiff on the Sachi combo if you declare that you want to search for one from the deck. Alongside our Sachi combo is the Yumiko top end. She has on play heal to stock, and the climax combo that lets you choose one of two modes. On attack, you pay one to gain 2000 power and either burn your opponent for one or stock swap them. Having stock swap on your finisher is both a convenience and a bit of a downside at the same time. It gives you immediate access to a powerful ability as part of your end game, but also forces you to choose it over the burn one, which otherwise would give you a higher damage ceiling. That being said, this card has high value in the deck because of its Pants Climax, allowing you to easily get back doors to reuse Sachi over and over again, as well as its Heal to Stock, since this deck runs Anti-Heal. Speaking of which, let's quickly touch on that Anti-Heal. Despite it not being a Climax combo, it's a very notable card that is part of Grisaia's identity. This Kazuki is a 2500 power character that can send herself to memory by paying one stock upon being reversed. While in memory, if either player heals from clock to waiting room, that player must discard a card or they have to put the top card of their deck into clock, which essentially negates the heal. Anti-heal promotes an aggressive strategy in this deck, in which you want to be constantly putting pressure on your opponent, pushing them closer and closer to losing, while also causing them to get taxed if they want to try to heal back down into safety. However, this effect doesn't do anything to heals that don't send directly from the clock to the waiting room. In our own deck, we are unaffected since our Yumiko heals to stock, while some other prominent healers in the meta such as SAO's Asuna or Don Machi's Hestia also heal to stock, making the anti-heals impact against those decks lower or even non-existent. It's also worth noting that the anti-heal stacks with multiple copies in memory, so if an opponent missteps into multiple Kazuki's, it can potentially put them in a disastrous position. However, you shouldn't assume or hope that your opponent will misplay into the anti-heal, as the better players will be able to cleanly navigate around it. Moving now into the rest of the list, starting with the level zeros, we have four copies of the Kazuki JC. Similar to the Utaha that we recently looked at in Saikano Flat, this Kazuki's cost is pay one and send herself to memory as opposed to waiting room, which helps to contribute to the memory count needed for certain cards in Grisaia. Kazuki's other effect is an on-play milled too, and if a climax is milled, you can give 1500 power to any of your characters. Contributing to the deck speed is a nice little bonus, but it does result in her base power being relatively low and making it hard to kill opposing characters. As you would with the Utaha level 0, you want to try to put Kazuki in the front row if your goal is to gain value. Use her as one of your attackers, and then send her to memory with her effect to get one of your other attackers back to hand. If your goal is to use her for reverse denial instead of value, she's best kept in the back row. Next we have three copies of the Sachi and Makina event Bonder. This card has a discard bond to the 1-1 feeding event, which allows us to salvage any character from our waiting room, send itself to memory, and then reveal the top card of our deck, and if that revealed card is a level 0 character, you get to send it to stock, refunding the cost. Along with the cooking with Sachin event, this pair of events gives a ton of selectivity, letting you constantly recur specific pieces back into your hand. Since feeding isn't locked to level in the same way the cooking event is, it's recommended to use this to get back the higher level characters. Our next level 0 might seem a bit odd at only one copy, but we have our Search Brainstorm Yumiko. She has Rest Self Search Brainstorm and the on-play effect of checking the top card of the deck and either leaving it there or putting it on the bottom. Top check utility is always helpful as it gives knowledge of upcoming triggers, 
helps the brainstorm hit more easily if you put a non-climax to the bottom, or even verifying a level 0 on top of the deck to get a stock refund with the feeding event. However, the reason Yumiko is at just one copy in this list is because she's not actually our main brainstorm. The main brainstorm of this deck is a level 1, which we'll get to in a bit. Moving on to our utility line in the level 0s, we have two copies of the Chizuru Climax Swap. In addition to her Climax Swap effect, she lets us look at and rearrange the top two cards of our deck when she's placed on stage from hand. Just like the Yumiko Brainstorm, this top check utility is useful for verifying upcoming triggers or looking for level 0s to get a refund on feeding. Chizuru is always a handy card to pick up if we draw into the wrong Climax, but we want to continue looping the Sachi combo. So we run two copies to make sure she's in our waiting room, available to be picked up off of the cooking event. Next up we have two copies of the level 0 Michiru. She has Ditch Climax Salvage on play, bringing additional discard outlets into the deck besides the Sachi and Makina event bonders. Additionally, on play she lets us look at the top card of the deck and either leave it there or send it to waiting room. This top check utility has the same uses as the Yumiko Brainstorm's on play effect, giving us the knowledge needed to make informed decisions. Finally, we have a 1 of Amane. This Amane has three effects. The first is pay 1 Sack Herself to top check up to 4 cards from the top of the deck, and add a Grisaya character from among them to our hand and send the rest to waiting room, which helps to contribute to the deck's speed. Notably, this is the only card in the deck that can mill flexibly, as Kazuki and the Cooking Event both mill exactly 2, and Brainstorms mill exactly 4. Amane is a pretty helpful card for making sure that the deck is ideal size when going towards the end of a deck rotation and if needed, can be grabbed repeatedly off the cooking events if you want to just get out of your current deck. Additionally, she can rest herself to give a character 500 power times its own level until the end of the turn, which can be mildly useful. Her final ability allows you to pay 1 and snipe an opposing level 0 front row character off the board. I actually feel like this effect is mostly useful for paying climaxes out of stock on demand, but it can be used to get rid of pesky front row characters such as runners and chasers, stop cards that need to send themselves to clock or memory to activate their effects, or even just open lanes to hit your opponent for more damage. For our level 1s, apart from the Sachi combo we also have a level 1 Kazuki Reverser as our secondary front row attacker. She sits at just 2500 base power, which doesn't really matter too much as she's a level 1 Reverser, but her second effect comes online when we have 3 or more memory, giving her a constant plus 2000 power and plus 1 soul. Having access to a costless 2 soul beater is really strong given the aggressive nature of the deck, so look to get 3 memory in a reasonable amount of time in order to turn this card online. As mentioned previously, this level 1 Sachi is the main brainstorm in this deck. She has assist 500, bringing our Sachi combos up to 6500 power on a full board, and is also a rest self salvage brainstorm. Salvage brainstorms are typically just more reliable overall than search brainstorms, especially towards the end of a deck rotation and the 500 power is definitely appreciated. Our last level 1 is the 1 of Yumiko Anti-Change Bottom Deck Bomb. In this list, we run just one as kind of a standard inclusion, but you could potentially run more copies if you want to have an easier time against decks like Alice which utilize a lot of early plays. Just be wary of the color. We already have red and yellow as prominent colors at level 1 due to our Climax Combo Package and Feeding Event, so you will have to navigate into blue in order to bring this card online early. At level 2, we have a Lone Sachi level 2. She is a level 2 reverser, useful into Alice in the current meta, and has a secondary effect that lets you boost up one of your other characters for 1500 power times the number of events in your waiting room. We run 8 events in this deck, which can provide up to a maximum of 12,000 extra power, however I wouldn't count on ever boosting for that much, since you will often have some Sachin cooking events in your hand because of Climax combo, and you will also probably have a feeding event or two in memory. Nevertheless, even 4500 or 6000 extra power is greatly appreciated to help beat over some of the large threats in the current metagame. The final card in this list is two copies of the Kazuki Early Play. She can be played at level 2 if you have two or less climaxes in waiting room, gains 1500 power on play until end of turn, and has a Musashi Burn effect the turn that she's placed. Musashi Burn effects activate when the damage is cancelled. Mill the top card of your deck and burn equal to the level of the milled card plus 1, where climaxes are treated as level zeros. This card contributes to the deck's aggressive strategy, being able to come out early and force damage down your opponent's throat, either by sticking her attack or getting cancelled and applying an additional instance of damage via the Musashi Burn. This card becomes especially good if your opponent is unable to deal with her 9500 power body, as they will be forced to front into her and leave open lanes. You won't be able to reuse the Musashi Burn effect since that's only usable on the turn you play her, 
but the open lane will give you more damage potential on future turns to continue pushing your opponent closer and closer to losing. Alright, let's take a look at the overall strategy of this deck. First, starting with the mulligan, you will always want to discard at least one character in case you trigger an early door climax. Look to prioritize the Kazuki level 0 JC for card advantage, as well as copies of the Sachi level 1 combo and climax to use at level 1. In the early game, your attacking strength is not very big at all, with the biggest power line you can reach being 2500 power with the anti-heals and event bonders. While this can be further boosted by Kazuki JC, which can buff 1500 power if she mills a climax, in general you will not be able to contest many opposing level 0 boards. That being said, it's still a good idea to take a somewhat aggressive approach if you open the Kazuki JC in your early game hand. In the mid game, your primary goal is to loop the Sachi combo. Use her climax combo to get Sachi and cooking into your hand, which you can then use to get Sachi back on the next turn. Additional options to recur Sachi back into your hand are the feeding event as well as the level 0 Kazuki JC. Hopefully you can redraw into her door climax or trigger a pants to get one back or at least draw a pants so that you can use Chizuru Climax Swap to get the Climax back and continue comboing. As you start to run out of steam, you can continue the aggression with cards like the Kazuki Level 1 Reverser and the Kazuki Musashi Early Play. Finally, look to end with multiple copies of your Yumiko combo as well as Kazuki Musashi. Ideally, you're playing a relatively fast game because of all the damage you push onto your opponent, but if the game goes long, you have the option of using the Stock Swap mode of Yumiko combo to ruin your opponent if they're trying to compress. Color priority in this deck goes to red for the level 1 combo, followed by yellow since it turns on your feeding events, which can in turn secure you Sachis for your combo turn. Blue typically comes last as it's only used for your level 3 combo and the lone copy of Yumiko Anti-Change Bomb. However, if you're in a matchup where the Yumiko Anti-Change Bomb is relevant, you might want to consider trying to get blue earlier than normal. One final detail I'd like to go over for this deck is when to send the level 0 Kazuki anti-heal to memory, assuming it's relevant in the current matchup. I've seen some players send it to memory as early as possible, while I myself prefer to just use it as a 2500 attacker in the early game and then send it to memory later once healing actually becomes relevant. This would allow me to save my stock to use on other early game resources such as brainstorms or feeding events. Ultimately, I think that this is more of a playstyle choice, I've definitely had some games where I decided to stick to my game plan and ignore sending the anti-heal to memory at level 0, only to never find a good opportunity to send it to memory later on, thus allowing the opponent to heal without being hindered. The Kazuki anti-heal does also contribute to the 3 memory needed for Kazuki Reverser to gain an extra 2k and 1 soul, so there's an additional benefit to sending it to memory early, even in matchups where the anti-heal isn't totally relevant. And that concludes our deck profile for the Fruit of Grisaia. Coming up next, we'll have our gameplay block, in which we'll be playing a couple games with this deck against a couple other decks that have focus on sending a lot of cards to memory, so look out for those games. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, this has been Randall aka Shizukats on the Tresses Collectibles channel. See ya!